Compression and expansion. These dynamic processors control the overall volume level of a signal in opposite directions. Compression will lower the volume over the threshold, and expansion will increase the volume over the threshold. So for instance here, a ratio of three to one means that for every three decibels over that threshold limit of negative 5.7 dB, you'll only get one decibel of volume in return. It's lowering the volume for you automatically. You can think of a compressor a bit like a roommate or someone who lives with you who's always telling you to turn down your noise. That roommate will have a threshold. And once your noise exceeds that threshold, they come in and they say, hey, can you turn it down by this much? Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. The attack time determines how quickly your roommate jumps in there. Does your roommate instantly jump in and say, hey, shut the hell up? Or is his attack time quite slow and the occasional bump somehow gets through his threshold. Now, if you have a sustained noise that exceeds the threshold for longer than the attack, then your roommate is coming in and saying, can you turn it down, please? This is actually the time it takes for you to turn it down to the acceptable volume. So the attack time is how long it takes the volume to be reduced by the threshold amount after it exceeds the threshold. Really fast attack times down in the sub millisecond range can squash all but the fastest transients and are used in limiters. Anything above a 10 ratio generally is considered a limiter. Hold dictates how long your roommate is gonna stand in your doorway with his arms folded staring at you, making sure that you keep the volume at a reasonable level. And once that hold time is over, he goes back to his room until the next time your volume exceeds his threshold. Hold can be used to preserve the transient shape of your sound rather than too quickly releasing. This sets a bit of time where it goes after you've compressed, this transient is going to be the same as it was, just quieter overall. If you have a quick release and no hold time, it's going to very quickly change the shape of your transient. After hold, there is release, which determines how much time it takes for the roommate to get back to his room and for you to turn the volume back up to where it was. Very fast release times are used in limiters again to sound as transparent as possible, just chopping off the tops of waveforms without much ducking sounding, although too fast a release time can cause lots of high-end artifacts and distortion, so that's a careful balance. Slow release times will sound a lot more smooth and can sound a lot more pumping depending on the program material and the attack settings. Different types of compressors have different types of harmonic and timing characteristics. And so there's actually saturation built into a lot of analog and modeled compressors, as well as distortion that can be achieved through fast attack and release times. Which means that a compressor is also a device you can use as a coloring tool. Look ahead is a parameter that comes before the attack stage, and it gives your roommate, your compressor, supernatural abilities to look into the future by a set amount of time. So even if you think about having some amount of noise over the threshold, he's gonna jump in there, clamp down before it even starts. This is another feature that's often used in limiters in order to get ahead of some really fast transients before they clip. Last, I wanna go over the knee, which smooths out the area of the threshold. If a knee is zero, the threshold is a point on a line. But if you increase the knee, that point blurs and becomes a curve so that compression is not only happening before 
the original point, but also continuing after. This can be used to soften up a compressor or to make an expander a little bit more responsive because it's expanding before the signal even gets to the threshold. A sidechain allows a compressor to listen to and react to a different signal than the affected signal. This can be just a band of the affected signal. So it's only reacting to a specific portion of the spectrum. Or this can be an external signal from, say, a, for example, a drum routed into different channels on this synth track so that our synth compressor can listen to those buses and react to that drum signal rather than its own signal. This is sidechain ducking compression. This can help make tracks reactive to each other. There are three main ways that I'll use a compressor typically. The first is to use faster attack and release times to zoom in to the transient level of a sound and reshape the envelope of each note. The second way is by using longer attack and release times to zoom out. Don't touch the individual notes and transients so much, but act more as an automatic magic fader that's adjusting the overall average level of things a little bit for you. This can help add consistency and help define the dynamic range of a track. The third way is by using side chaining, like I demonstrated here with the synths, to create dynamic interplay between different tracks. Where when you have a hit happening, the synth is compressed. Or maybe you want to do vice versa. And when the hit happens, your signal is expanded a bit. This can be used to make two tracks work a little bit more cohesively and act as one. Limiters are specially tuned compressors with super fast timings to deliver aggressive gain reduction. Limiters can also be used in the mix on transients like drums to control the tips of their waveforms to bring up some extra volume, room tone, and sustain in the drum. Gates are the black holes of dynamic processors. They have much of the same parameters for timing and threshold as compressors and expanders. And like expanders, they increase dynamic range, but much more extreme. Anything below the threshold is cut off. Anything above the threshold is let through and that is all dependent on the various timing parameters. Gates can make great noise reduction tools by removing low-level sounds when an instrument isn't playing or reducing the decay time of an instrument. They're really good on drums to decrease your room tone and tighten them up a bit, and they're good for sound design to really chop up and distort even the sound. Compressors, expanders, limiters, and gates are all useful dynamic tools for controlling the dynamic range of your sounds. You can either use really fast attack and release times to zoom in on the microscopic details of your transients, or you can use slow attack and release times to zoom out to the overall large picture average volume of your sounds. 